New, simple, and easy to build storage system for Minecraft Bedrock and Java Edition. This is an incredibly simple and easy to build storage system that you can make a day one in your new survival world. It's incredibly easy to build and customize. You can start off with just this tiny little storage system right here and then expand it later to be wider, taller, these weird funky diagonal shapes, and it can even go around corners as well. This is something that you can build incredibly early in your survival worlds to start getting organized early and stay organized. That way you don't need to worry about chess monsters later on. This is an upgraded version of my previous tiny multi-item sorter. That one was just a single layer of chests and could not be stacked, so this is the upgraded version that can be stacked basically as tall as you want. This is not like a, an item filter. Those can only sort one item per slice. Instead, this is a multi-item storage system. So you can store up to 54 unique items per chest. As you can see, we have a bunch of different items in here. So every time that you put items into your input chest, they will end up where you want them in your storage system. So as you can see, I have one set up for like cobblestone and stone, another one for logs. We got a redstone chest, valuables, and food. Basically, your imagination is the limit here you can set this up for any type of item that you want it is fully customizable so let's demo the system all we got to do is throw any item that we want into this input chest in here and as you can see the system is going to start activating and as you can see it's taking cobblestone out of here and putting that into our cobblestone chest each one of these items that we threw in has a dedicated slot in our storage system so they're going to be automatically sorted and organized for us now keep in mind this storage system cannot handle non-stackable items like items or equipment or enchanted books if you want to sort those, then you need an Allay item sorter. So any items that cannot be sorted or don't have a spot allocated for them will simply end up over here in the output chest. And as you can see, it's putting our diamonds into the valuables chest where they belong. So this system is completely lossless. Items will always end up in the chest that they are supposed to. So if you put cobblestone into this chest right here, it'll always end up in there. There's only three times that items will ever end up in your overflow chest. One, if you're not sorting them, so like rotten flesh. Two, if they are not non-stackable items, and three if you ran out of room. So as you see, we got some cooked salmon in here, and that is because we ran out of room in this chest. There's just nowhere else for them to go in. So this storage system has several pros and a couple of cons to it. First of all, it is just incredibly small and incredibly cheap and super easy to build as well. If you compare this to other multi-item storage systems, they are very large and very expensive. This system does have a couple of cons with it. So for example, it makes a noise, and that is because there are item elevators are basically as simple as they could be so it will click about once per second of course you can always turn down your volume or use a texture pack that reduces the noise of droppers another drawback is that this system is as simple as it possibly can be meaning that it's not a smart system so for example if i throw in a bunch of iron when this system runs out of iron in this chest right here it is going to turn off so that means that we're going to have a couple of iron left behind in these hoppers or maybe in the droppers and that's actually not a problem because the next time that you throw items in here, all of those will still get sorted where they should be. If you don't want any valuable items to get left behind in the droppers while the system is turned off, then just put some non-valuable items in behind it. So put in some cobblestone or something else. That'll make sure that the system runs long enough for everything to end up in the chest where it should. Silent multi-item storage systems that don't leave any items behind when it turns off is a definite mid to end game build. You can check out my tutorial for that. Links are everywhere. To give you a basic overview of how the system works, when you put items into here that is going to activate a comparator which will then turn on some redstone to clock the system so it's going to take items out of your chest and it's going to put them into this hopper right here while the hopper below it is locked now if it's a piece of cobblestone or any of these other items it'll just go into this chest but if it can't fit into this chest then it'll go down to the next hopper while the hopper below that one is locked so then only logs and those kinds of things can fit into here and if it's not a log it'll just keep on going down the system until it finds a chest that it can fit in so diamonds would go all the way through until they land in this chest right here and if it doesn't fit into any of your chests then it's going to go into the overflow so you can lay out these chests to be however you want them to be so as you can see i got an entire valuables chest all of these things will be sorted in here you can have a different item in every single slot storing 54 unique items per chest or if you're expecting to have a lot of items you can spread that out over a bunch of different slots like how i have the iron keep in mind that you need to have every single slot in the chest filled up otherwise random stuff will just get put in there 
And that's the basics of how a multi-atom storage system works. If you like this kind of build, then make sure to subscribe. That way you don't miss future tutorials and let's hop into it. I'll be showing you how to build a three by three storage system like this one right here. These are all the materials that you'll need for that three by three storage system. As you can see, it is very cheap because this is a highly customizable storage system. I can't give you an accurate materials list for like every possible combination, but in general, these are the material types that you'll need to build these systems. Now, basically everything is the same between Java and Bedrock Edition, but there are some slight tweaks that you'll need for Java Edition. I'll mention those at the end of the tutorial. So the area that you'll need for a three by three storage system is going to be six blocks deep by eight blocks wide it is going to be one block below the ground for some redstone and then five blocks above the ground for all your actual chests. And let's start building. So we're going to go in and buy three blocks on our front left corner and we're going to have a chest right here. So this is going to be your first double chest and we're just going to make a stack of three of them. So this is going to be your first column. Now we're going to go back behind this column and place a stack of droppers facing straight upwards all the way to the top layer right here. Make sure that these are droppers and not dispensers. Now make sure that you are crouched and place a hopper going into the back of that chest, that one and that one. And you also need a hopper going into the side of this dropper right here. So that is our first little column of chests and we're going to need three of these in total. So our next column of chests is going to be going right here and then right here. And it's actually the exact same build process for all of these. It's basically identical. So what we're going to need is another stack of droppers right here going upwards and another stack right here as well. Then place in all of your hoppers and make sure that these are facing in the correct directions. So the bottom one should always be facing into the dropper to the left and all these ones right here should be facing into the chest in front of them. And now it's time for the redstone, which is super simple. It's basically just a two wide section of redstone over and over again. So once you've built it once, you can build it like a thousand times super easily. So we're going to start at the bottom of this dropper tower right here with a repeater on one tick and then redstone dust block behind it redstone and then you want a slab right here and a piece of glass for your lower layers then you need a saw block next to it like so so place in some redstone dust in these two places a repeater right there and then a redstone torch and that is that layer done and now we can go up to the next layer and because this is our very top layer we can use two slabs right here instead of a slab and glass it just makes it a bit cheaper. Anyway, we're going to place a solid block next to it like so, and then some redstone dust there and there. Then we need our redstone torch and our repeater right there. And as you can see, that is the two wide section of redstone installed for this chest line. And now we just need to do that for these two sections as well. So again, it's a repeater at the bottom, redstone, block, redstone, and then it's slab, glass, and solid block next to it like so. Repeater, redstone, redstone, and then a redstone torch. And then for the upper layer, it's double slab, solid block, redstone, redstone, repeater, and make sure you install that redstone torch. So as you can see, it's the same redstone over and over again. So do that for this final section as well. And now it's time for the main clock that controls the build. So we're gonna go down to the furthest right section and place in a repeater right here on two ticks and then a block, redstone torch, and then another repeater right here on two ticks. And that should power this entire lower line, as you can see here. Now we're gonna place in a glass block right here with another piece of redstone dust on top of it, and that should power the upper line, as you can see. I'd recommend placing a temporary lever right here just to turn off the build. And if you ever wanna turn off the system for some reason, you can also just flick that lever. And now we need to connect each of our slices together for items to transfer across. So we're gonna start off by placing in a couple of solid blocks to the left of the build right here. Here, place a hopper going to the left into that block right there and then this right here is actually going to be our input chest so that's where you'll be dumping items into the system for them to be sorted now each one of your next hopper columns is going to have a dropper on top of it right here this is just to save you some resources you could also use like a barrel right there or really whatever you want and then directly in front of these repeaters you're going to have a hopper going to the left so we're going to have a hopper right here facing into that dropper hopper right here. You might expect us to also have a hopper right here facing to the left, but because this is the final slice of our system, we actually don't need any droppers in this entire column right here. You just need a solid block in front of each one of the repeaters. You only do this for the final slice of your system because you're not going to have an elevator on that slice, unless you wanted to have your output chest for your overflow items at the top for some reason, but you can save some resources and our overflow chest is going to be going down here at the bottom. Now you will have to come around the back 
back side of the build and adjust this final hopper right here instead of pointing to the left for your dropper tower just point it forwards and that is going to be delivering your items to the overflow chest so now we just need to wrap up the redstone so come around to this side right here we're going to place a solid block up that way that redstone is pointing directly into it we need a couple of slabs in this area right here and then a redstone torch right there and two repeaters going into these blocks now we're going to put some redstone dust up there this is going to make sure that your items go into the system at the correct speed that way it sorts properly now we need to install the detection that actually turns your farm on so we're going to place in a couple of solid blocks and these two locations right here and then another solid block there and another one down that way you have this kind of x shape as you can see now at the top of this you need a comparator and then a redstone dust right here and finally a redstone torch and that should power all of your redstone lines and congratulations your redstone is now complete but there are a few tweaks that you'll need to make if you're playing on java edition in just a moment you can also save a couple materials on the very last slice of your build if you don't have an item elevator right here you can remove this block repeater redstone and these two slabs they're just not necessary and they don't do anything and if you have a dropper right here it's actually gonna launch items out of your build so yeah you you don't want that now before you try and run the system you'll need to flick this lever off that way it doesn't you know turn the farm off and now if we drop a bunch of items into here they're all just gonna go into the first chest as you can see there none of them should ever end up in the second chest or any of the other ones and that is because this chest is entirely empty so now is the grueling task of actually you know organizing your system and filling in each one of these slots with the items that you want to be sorted there. If you're building this on Java, there's just a couple of tweaks that you need to make for the system to work properly. First of all, you might need to change up your redstone elevator on the backside here. That way, the redstone signal actually goes up and down properly because on Java, redstone doesn't go down glass because reasons so an easy way to test this is just to put in an extra block with some redstone you can remove that torch that should power all of your redstone here as you can see and then you can also go ahead and unflick that lever and this should also power all of your redstone too you'll also need to put some redstone dust between the slices to connect together these redstone lines again just because redstone doesn't go down glass blocks and with those three small tweaks, you can build the system any size or shape that you want on Minecraft Java Edition. Now that you know how to build the basic 3x3 module, you can take these skills and make a system that is any size or shape that you want. So let's take a look at what the redstone for those would be. So this is the single module that doesn't even require an item elevator. And as you can see, it's basically identical to the first slice that we built up over there. If you want to make your system taller, like five or seven chests, that is also very easy. You just need to add in another layer of redstone on the back side so this is our very top layer of redstone with our input chest and then it's just more identical layers of redstone beneath that and it really is very straightforward it's basically what you would expect you just need to make it taller and then of course you need to adjust your redstone elevator on the back side if you want to expand the system it's also very straightforward you just basically build more slices directly next to each other and you can go on for quite some ways but eventually your redstone signal strength is going to run out and your clock down here won't be able to power the far far edges of your system but as you can see the redstone is exactly how to expect it it's basically just more slices packed in here if you really wanted to you could also make this weird diagonal system i don't i don't know why you would ever do this but it's technically possible uh the redstone for it is very odd and strange looking i overall would not recommend it but if you if you really want to i can't stop you and finally if you want to go around corners that's also really easy you'd start by placing in your chest kind of on the diagonal like this where you want them and then we just have a couple of regular slices on our first half we're taking the item elevator up here and then we're just sending it around the corner to the other two slices these ones are built how you would expect them however we have this additional one repeater right here that's powering the hopper right here that just allows the items to come in at the correct timings and that way and actually properly sorts now this only applies to corner systems but as you can see we have a redstone line down at the bottom here that's powering this system over here we're taking the output from this repeater because that actually gives us enough signal strength to power that system if it weren't for that repeater then none of this stuff would get powered as you can see if you like these kind of minecraft tutorials then subscribe for more thank you so much for watching and then there was silence